Hello, friends. I'm Dr. J, your high performance leadership expert. Happy Sunday, fun day. I'm here to fuel you with the skill that will double your income. The average income of all occupations is approximately $65,000 a year. Yet those with leadership skills have an average income of over $137,000 a year. So might it be a skill we should be developing? I think so. I've been studying leadership since fourth grade, thanks to my favorite teacher of all time, Mrs. Davis, and recently studied leadership more intensely through my doctorate program, specifically focusing on leading in a culture of uncertainty and change. And man, I didn't know it at the time, but wooey, I don't know about you, but I'm seeing a lot of uncertainty in my life. And it seems like every time I turn around, there's one more bit of uncertainty for me to navigate. And so I'm really excited about this topic because it's leadership that carries you through the challenging seasons of your life. And not only that, but these are the skills that will help you pay the bills, which I'm all about empowering women to achieve time and financial freedom. So this week we're gonna talk about beliefs. I'm gonna share seven belief systems with you that will help you integrate new ways of thinking into your beliefs. Why are beliefs so important? Because your beliefs determine your behavior. For example, I've had a whole lot of stress over the last couple of weeks and I started to believe that what I eat doesn't matter. So I would come home, make myself a plate of nachos because it's real easy to sprinkle chips on a plate, load them with some cheese, pop it in the microwave. One minute later, you got dinner. I know I'm a high performance expert. High performance physiology says do not do that. My medical team says do not do that. They have told me that consuming more than 0% of dairy in my diet leads to cancer. I am a survivor and thriver. And so I take that very seriously. Yet in this season of slump and struggle, the aftermath of cancer, my friends, has been 100% harder than the battle itself because during the battle, I was fighting on an outcome. Afterwards, your entire belief system of what you think matters is completely shattered. And so instead of reinvention, I'm now in a season of rebirth. And if you're interested in knowing the delineated differences of those things, I encourage you to go back to previous episodes of my podcast, Shift Happens, where you can see the specific differences of reinvention and rebirth. And rebirth is like the truly the birth of a new version of yourself. Whereas reinvention, you're just iteratively improving and moving yourself up into the right. And so in this season, I'm really struggling to understand what is it that is most important? I believe it's love, yet love doesn't pay the bills, right? I can't write a check to my mortgage company about love and have my miraculous debts paid or to buy my daughter's next horse with a paycheck written in love, right? And so we have to navigate both. And I'm surrounded by a lot of negativity and uncertainty in the world in which I'm living. And at first I thought, I don't really wanna talk about it because I'm a real positive person. I want my words to be optimistic and joy-filled, yet there is a time and a place to talk about reality. And in that reality, in the context of to also exhibit leadership and recognizing leadership is simply behavior. Our behaviors determine the quality of our lives Yet we ask ourselves, what causes us to behave in certain ways? So as I was building this nacho habit, I started to ask myself, what beliefs am I operating from that tell me that this behavior is appropriate or okay, right? What beliefs am I operating from when I wanna go and complain about men to a friend of mine? Okay, it's because there was a belief that I held for a long time after my daughter's father left us. And I started to form a belief that I could be a man better than men could be. So I was manning up and I decided I'm going to be the man of the house and the woman of the house and I'll do all the things. And so because I built this belief that men cause harm to families and societies, I decided I don't need them in my life. And do you see how quickly your behaviors can form from a belief that's as simple operating in the background of your subconscious that you're not even paying attention to? 
It might be, I was speaking to someone um, over this past week who struggles with obesity. Most of my family struggles with obesity. It's something that I fight daily. Um, and that individual said, well, it's genetic. I said, well, that's an easy excuse to carry. And while genetic may play one factor, let's talk about the fact that any behavior, any outcome is a multivariate statistics problem. There are multiple variables that go into excellence. There are multiple variables that go into financial prosperity and abundance or optimal health, vibrant energy. Those are the things I'm focused on. Yet when I'm working with clients, often we talk about the normal distribution curve and what is that average? Your average, if we look at America, is obesity, depression, anxiety, and financial disparity. Anybody wanna choose common inputs at that point? No, your inputs will determine your outputs. I was working with a client on this this week. We were looking at your quality of life. Your inputs determine your outputs. What are the specific qualities that you're looking for in your life? You will receive what you believe because your belief is what governs behavior. So let's prime the mind with some positive beliefs this week, shall we? I came across this um, post on Instagram from universe.guidance that says, there is an immense power in believing that everything will work out. When you accept what is and visualize your desires, the universe will deliver magic. That resonated so deeply with me because it was my medical team. It was a neighbor back home that gave me this book called Love, Medicine and Miracles. And in that book, they talked about the most extraordinary and exceptional patients. And in that moment, I decided I am going to commit to being an extraordinary and exceptional patient. I got my medical team on board. I said, I wanna be the most exceptional patient you've ever seen, tell me what I need to do. And I had to form a belief that I was going to be cured. Otherwise, I would not have taken any of the actions that I did. I wouldn't have done the crazy sound baths and qigong and all these woo things that this little math science girl thought was crazy at first. Yet I can tell you right now, the little things matter because it was all of those micro changes to my biobehavioral choices that are why I'm sitting here with hair on my head. I literally was told three to four months of radiation followed by intensive chemotherapy and I ended up choosing to take the least intrusive surgical path possible, yet was told we're gonna have to study your margins, we're gonna have to study your lymph nodes, and if, if cancer has spread, which given that it was the most aggressive tumor type and its KI-67 protein was a 51 on a scale of zero to 20 plus, describing growth, I was told you're likely going to have to go back. I decided no. I don't listen to what I'm told. I create my reality. That's a belief. I know wholeheartedly that what you do matters. I know your inputs determine your outputs. I'm a scholar. I know that studying leads to a better life because when you know better, you do better. And I luckily had come across a book years prior at Barnes and Noble called Crazy Sexy Diet by Chris Carr. And she described how she cured herself of cancer with food. So I knew it was possible for me too. That's why it's important to stand in your stories. Our beliefs are the lens we use to view life. We see what we convince ourselves is true. So we will conceive a reality that we believe is true for ourselves. So I wanna share the seven beliefs that I've been researching this weekend as, or as I prepare for our time together. These are beliefs that leaders hold, especially amidst challenge. And what's so beautiful about studying leadership is not only does it double your earning potential in the marketplace as you market and position yourself for excellence in your career, it translates directly to your family, into your life, into your community. It affects every dimension of your life, from your finances to food and fitness, to career growth. And so it's so important to me that we build leadership and specifically high performance leadership. Why? Because the world's highest performers are happier, healthier, and less stressed than their peers. They're not peak performers scaling the peak to plummet to the valley below, to do it again and scale the next peak, and then over time wonder what on earth am I doing? Why am I riding this roller coaster? High performers perform consistently at high levels while maintaining their health and well-being and quality relationships. That's according to the largest body of research on high performance and how they define themselves. They have greater clarity, energy, courage, productivity, and influence. Those are the things that we're working to cultivate in our lives. 
And so I want to introduce you to the beliefs that high performance leaders carry, because when we foster and nurture these beliefs, we create positive outcomes for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for others in the workplace and in the whole wide world. So the first is a belief in personal responsibility. I want you to write this down in your notes. I am responsible for my reactions regardless of external circumstances. A leader chooses how they're going to respond. They accept responsibility for that action. They know that they can't control external events, but they can only control their response. So leaders carry a belief that a behavior is a choice and it allows them to act decisively even when there's negativity and uncertainty present. The second is the belief in the power of positivity. Positivity is a powerful force that can transform challenges into opportunities. When I was walking around with my cancer diagnosis, I would literally walk and tell myself, I turn obstacles into opportunities. I am the queen of turning obstacles into opportunities. I'm building an identity for myself. And I want you to be thoughtful about the narrative and talk track you have in your head. If it's negative, mine is most of the time, that's why I'm passionate about this. There are ways to turn it into the positive. That's why I'm gifting you a free complimentary session in my Extraordinary Life Edit program. So please use the link to access that, type in the code blessing, and you'll be able to schedule yourself a free session with me. So leaders know that that positive mindset is crucial, especially when the rest of the world is swirling in negativity. I like to tell myself I am a relentless optimist. It means I'm gonna bring that warrior-like spirit to keep optimism as the foreground and filter of my life because that affects your vibrational energy. Your vibrational energy affects what you manifest and create as truth in your life. The third is a belief in growth and learning. Every challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. Leaders hold this belief that setbacks and opportunities are not obstacles, they're setups. This mindset is what helps them stay resilient and focused on the solution, not the problem. I heard on uh, Christian radio the other day, it said, focus on the mountain maker, not the mountain. Focus on the divine, focus on the greatness, focus on the brilliance and not the problem that's on your plate. The fourth is the belief in influence through example. Um, there's a really wonderful book that I cite in my Doubt to Daring Greatly masterclass. And it says that we will influence 80,000 people in our lives. If you take the average lifespan of 78, that means we're influencing two to three people every single day. And most of you all, since you are training with me on a Sunday, you're at least double that because that's what I know about you. When you are truly extraordinary and you hold yourself to a different level of performance, a different standard of excellence for your life, you are going to have an even greater influence than that. And sometimes it's as simple as a smile. I now serve on the safety team at my church and we were talking about how a smile, someone kind of thought it was a joke and I said, actually, you know, sometimes it was a smile that helped carry me through my cancer journey where I would be feeling down in the dumps or absolutely exhausted. And I'd be walking through the grocery store and sometimes it would be the smile of a stranger that lifted me up and helped me realize that there's good in humanity. And so leaders believe in influence through example. They know that they are role modeling the way. You, you don't even have to look far to see this, right? You have, if you, you know the negative Nancy, what do you do when you're with that person? You become negative and start whining and complaining and moaning right alongside them, right? Yet when you're with someone whose vibration is high, who's always talking about magnificent things, what do you do? You rise and follow. That's why it's so important. Operant conditioning, B.F. Skinner talks about the influence of our environment and the people around us. Jim Rohn says you are like the five people you surround yourself with. That's why I created Warrior Women's Society so that we would have a tribe of people who get together to lift each other up. Because if we leave that to chance, my friends, you will sink. I always pull out my vibrational scale here. Here's your high vibe. The three words that have highest vibrational energy I focus on those in my High Performance Leadership Academy. We stay in that zone. The world will pull you down here. And if you like a 
attracts like. So if you're in a low vibe place, guess what you're going to be attracting and, and pulling right into your life and your ecosystem? Low vibrational beings. So we need to set the tone with our actions. Our behavior is a role model. Leaders have strong, positive behaviors. They inspire and influence their teams, even in difficult times. And I have to tell you, my friends, if you got your child to eat a healthy meal, to get ready for school, to do their homework, you're a leader. That is leadership. Leadership is simply influencing others. The fifth is the belief in the power of belief. What you believe is what your reality is. If you believe things are working in your favor, you will experience favor. If you believe life is hard and challenging, you will experience hardship and challenge. So we know that our mindset and that internal dialogue of self-talk significantly impacts our external outcomes. This belief is what cultivates that positive, constructive belief, belief system that we're always excavating and monitoring, right? That I'm like asking myself, that thought has a belief under it. What is the belief underneath that thought? I believe that human beings are absolutely brilliant. And therefore my thoughts are often, I'm seeing so many brilliant things that people are doing. Like, oh wow, that's a cool innovation. Oh, who thought of that? I just saw, uh, I'm in the Porsche Club of America and I just saw this announcement that came out that came through my email and it had, it was a tribute to veterans and they'd wrapped these Porsches in camouflage. Like the literal paint color of the Porsche was camouflage. And I thought, man, that was a creative idea for someone to be acknowledging and supporting veterans and wrap that car. Just truly brilliant. Um, because I believe in the brilliance of humanity, I see brilliance everywhere. Whether it's a new book that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a brilliant title. What a brilliant description. How cool. They decided to put a big Instagram post inside. That was neat. Right? Like I see brilliance everywhere in the simplest things like the beauty of the color scheme of a coffee mug. Right? And so that's a choice because I know that I create the lens in which I see the world. The sixth is the belief in adaptability and flexibility. You have to be adaptable and flexible in today's world. The World Economic Forum forecasts 95 million new jobs by 2025. This was based on a report that came out two years ago. So over the duration of three years, 95 million new jobs were going to be coming out. Amazing, right? Another brilliant design. I absolutely love Yeti mugs. Love this color. Whoever made that, right? I'm grateful. Every time I see this color, it brings joy to my heart. Simple things, my friends. Very simple things. Agility goes with this theme of adaptability and flexibility, right? If we were to wrap that into one word, it would be agility. That happens to be the number one job skill that employers across the globe are looking for in 2024. So if you're the type of person like I used to be where you make your perfect plan, you manage the minutes and you plan to execute like a pro and then something throws you a curveball and you get all bent out of shape about it, that's now the new D player. An A player is able to take that challenge, take that change and say, not a problem, I can succeed anyway. I pivot with grace, I pivot with ease, I change direction, I'm fluid. I loved, um, during my cancer journey, my daughter and I watched this show called SWAT and there's an amazing leader in that show called Hondo. I watch TV shows where I'm looking at leadership and that's what I'm thinking about when I'm watching. And Hondo would always tell his team, be liquid. That is what's important, my friends. Be liquid. Go with the flow. Life will have boulders and rocks in your little river, and your job is to meander around them with grace. The last one is one of my favorites, belief in the collective strength. Together, we are stronger and can overcome any obstacle. A lot of us, especially those of you who are high, high achievers, you have this kind of silo of silence that we sit in, and we tend to, we have a tendency, again, the norm, which, what do we know about the norm? The norm is obesity, depression, anxiety, and financial disparity. So every time you're thinking about your response, I want you asking yourself, what is the norm? A typical response is to face a challenge in isolation, to face a challenge alone, to tell yourself you're the only one going through this. Well, guess what, my friends? We live in a very diverse, complex world. You're not the only one, and you're not going to be the first or the last. 
we are stronger together. So we have to learn how to create boundaries, how to be safe in that space, create a psychologically safe space for ourselves and know that we can overcome any obstacle together through teamwork and collaboration. So collective effort and shared beliefs create a strong supportive environment where we can weather any storm. I saw this just even being new to the safety team at church, right? They call ourselves family. We talk about smiles. We talk about service. There are fingerprints all over your lives based on your narrative that you're telling yourself. So as you think about your career in business, I want you thinking this week deeply about your belief system. What are the words that you're using to communicate your values? Do you know what those values are? Are you looking at specifically and strategically the inputs that determine the outputs in your life? And if you want to work alongside me to examine that at a deeper level, I'm here for you. That is what I'm passionate about. It's why I'm here on my Sunday fun day, leveling up with you. Because together a rising tide raises all ships. Together we are building brilliance. It starts with ourselves and then it overflows into our families, into our communities, into our workplaces and into the world. So I want you to say this with me and proclaim this. We, everything is working in my favor. We are building brilliance. Things might not always go how you imagine. I'm living in that season right now. I never imagined myself coming to Florida. I never imagined myself moving across the country. I'm a West Coast girl. I grew up in Cali. The, the state of Florida was never on my roadmap. But I heard an individual um, yesterday who is an amazing innovator and creator, has created several businesses, and one of his words of advice was, don't trust your master plan because it will always be changing because it's difficult for us as business owners to understand what is of value to the customer. And whatever business you're in, there is always a customer, right? In education, that customer is children and families. In politics, that customer is the voting body of citizens. In the traditional business world, the customer is the customer. It's not as hard in that environment. The trends that exist can be hard to predict. So we have to, I, I still love my 12 page strategic life plan. I'm not gonna lie, I have my great eight dimensions. I walk through each one quarterly. I make sure that my vision and aligned commitments are solid. I like it tight. However, I have to hold on loosely to that and allow myself to remember, be liquid. The number one job skill of 2024, agility. So this week, I wanna give you two challenges. The first is pay attention to how you respond when things don't go according to plan. I want you to stand tall, position yourself as a leader, and tell yourself, I will get myself to this, I got myself to this challenge, I will get myself through this challenge, because my friend, you've made it through 100% of the hard days, which makes you undefeated. So it is not time to play like a defeated person right now. It is time to level up your leadership. Second challenge is, to recognize what is that inner narrative? What is the belief that's underneath some of those thoughts? Allow yourself to challenge that narrative. And if you find yourself attached to a negative narrative, we have some rewiring work to do. The beauty is neuroplasticity is real. Our brain can change itself. So I would love to spend some time with you if you're interested in scheduling an Extraordinary Life Edit, please go ahead and do so. The link is in our training notes in the description. And with that, my friends, it's time for me to hit the barn and get my daughter on a horse. Go out and shine your love and light into this beautiful, brilliant world. We need you here more than ever before. The reason that you're passionate about your business, if you're struggling right now, like most business owners are, let me remind you of why you got started, why you were crazy enough to do this. It's because that pull in your heart, that tug that keeps nagging at you, that's someone else's electromagnetic field calling you in to serve them at a high level. Don't you ever forget that, my friends. I'll be praying for you. I'll be sending golden rays of love and light your way. And I encourage you to do the same. Go out and shine your love and light into the world. With love and many blessings.